What's up guys, let's catch up on day eight of Advent of Code. This one's called Resonant Collinearity. The description's pretty tough to figure out, but once you do, the problem makes sense. We've got a grid with dots for empty space, just like we've seen a few times before, and a single character for some kind of object in that space, which in this scenario is an antenna. The O's are sending out a frequency that affects each other, and the A's are sending out a frequency that affects each other, but they don't interfere with the other characters. And our job is to find these anti-nodes. The way it's described is that you've got an anti-node that's twice as far away from one of a pair as it is from the other, which makes it sound like they're going to be in the middle or in some kind of weird diamond shape. But no, it's just a line. So it's really the idea of extrapolating a line. We've got these two, and then we just take that slope farther out in each direction. And then the overlap is no problem if the two lower A's have an antinode on top of a big A. That's fine. We still count it. But we only count each spot once. So if a spot was an antinode for different pairs, it's only one. That means we're going to be using sets, just like I have quite a bit recently, and we're going to be using dictionaries. So what I did to start was my grid set up from before. I have a point and a space, and I have a lookup that takes you from a point to a character in that space. We don't have to worry about going off screen in this one. In fact, it's kind of about that, but it's there. It's nice. I like it. So now we've got the file we read is pretty small here, and it's not that big, even on the big data. I don't have to worry too much about performance in this one. So what are we doing for part one? I've got part one written out, and you're going to watch me do part two, because I thought that was a nice compromise between typing the whole thing, which might be annoying, or having it all out there, which might feel like, why are we even doing it. So part one says, okay, we look through the nodes, and what I mean is the groups. So if I say this, I don't really need to compare each spot to each other. I just need to compare the O's. And then I don't need to compare every spot over here. I just need to compare the A's. So I have this nodes function, which makes a map, a dictionary of like O, and then all the spaces O is. A and all the spaces A is. And that's a bunch of different types for the big data. So it would be like 8 and then all the spaces where you find an 8. Or lowercase j and all the spaces where you find a lowercase j. Let's print that just to show what I'm talking about. Print nodes of space. And this is for the example, so it only have two categories uh, unless I typed it wrong. So this has got like O, and then all the places where you find an O, and then A, and all the places where you find an A. So these are the groups we're working with. These guys only contact each other, and they don't even know what else there is because they don't worry about it. So how do we get those nodes? We just look through the items, and if it's not a dot, I thought about keeping track of the dots, but we don't need it. And then we add it to a default dict. Why is it default? just so we can add without having to create one the first time. Not a big deal. And then we have part one says, OK, we're looking through those. Turns out we could just look through the values. Because once we're in a group, those guys contact each other, and they don't even have to know what they are. Like The O's don't have to know that they're O's, and the ins don't have to know that they're ins. They just know that I've already been grouped. You know, so let's try that. Make sure I didn't ruin it. Okay, we still got the answer. And how do we do this? Well, we're grabbing the combos. So if there are like four O's, then we compare these two with each other and these two with each other, and so on to get all the combos. This isn't even that big. So the big data I checked, I t had it add them up beforehand, and it turns out that they were like. 300 something combos total of all the types. So even if we had something with pretty bad performance, it wouldn't be an issue here. 
So now we've got the combos, and then we update it with this idea of the anti-nodes. So how do I do that? We just extrapolate the slope, like I said. So um, dr, dc is like the change, the rise over run kind of thing. And then we take one, one way, and we take one the other way. This is like the equivalent of um, taking this up and left and taking this down and right, but it would work with any direction. And I know that's pretty annoying with like dr, dc, and point other, rp, cp, rco, whatever, but I thought it was better than using indexing and trying to bracket point 0.1 and point 0.0 type stuff. Luckily, this is all wrapped up, and once you ask the antinodes, you just get two points no matter what. We don't check if they're in bounds. I save that for later. And then, well, actually, I do it right here. I say space.contains is going to give us the ones that are in bounds. Um, which is checking if they're in the dictionary, so we don't need to do any like less than or greater than stuff. And we definitely don't need to do any try except to see if they're in a nested list or something. So we update that, and then we take the length. This is also a set because we do have overlaps. So there might be a pair that has an antinode here, and then there might be another pair that has an antinode there, and that doesn't count twice. Now. That gave us 14 on the example, which you can see right here, all of the antinodes zooming around the ones we have. Some of them would have been off screen, like this O and this O would have had a guy up here, but it doesn't count toward the total. Okay, and then we can try that on the big data to get something. So 394. Like I said, there were about 300 combinations total, which means that each one contributed about one antinode. Even though they create two, there could be some off screen or there could be some that overlap. So each one created a little bit more than one on average, which seems fine to me. So then part two, what does part two say? Part two is the same thing, but it keeps going. So like if these guys have an anti-node that diagonally extrapolates here, well, it just keeps going. And these two have an anti-node that diagonally extrapolates here, well, another and another. And the nice thing is we're working with integers. We don't have any weird floating point slope or anything, but they just echo a few times until they go off screen. So for this one, it's really similar. There's going to be some copy-paste, and that's okay. So we're going to say, I like this anti-nodes thing. I don't want to change it or add in like a part two Boolean. I'm just going to copy and make a slightly new version for, uh, we're going to call it resonant, because that's what they call it in the problem, that like this frequency is resonating. So I'm story that I found pretty tough to follow. And this one has the points, but it also has to know the space because it has to know when to stop. Like it's going to echo two times, three times, who knows. So this is going to give you a set of points uh, rather than a tuple of two. Who knows how many it's going to be. Okay. And then this part starts the same thing. We find our others, we find our quote unquote slope, and then we take this, but we just take each one and keep going. It could be nicely calculated with like find the distance between this and the top and this and the side, and we find the max or the min of like how many times it's gonna echo, but I'm just gonna do a while loop, okay? So I'm gonna say like, um, while um, antinode, which is this, I'm going to do a separate while loop for each direction. 
so you could imagine like these two guys are going this way but if there was room up and left they would go that way too so they would be echoing in two directions um, while that the new antinode is in the space then we keep going so um, that one was based on like the first point like I imagine it is the top left but it doesn't have to be the top left they're gonna get to us in any order so we're gonna go our and CP equals anti node, and then we're going to have some like collection result, which is a set of points, is a set, and then you say, okay, result dot add anti node, and then we do the same thing on the other guy, except it is this. It's like the one that was going this way and then the one that was going the other way. So we're going to change these to O, point, and other. I know it's terrible naming. I just don't like numbers. I don't like calling them point one and point two. So calling them point and other is just as bad, but at least there's no numbers. <laughs> and then we're going to return result. Is that right? Well, let's try. Let's see. Uh, part two is going to be pretty similar to part one. Um, we go through the stuff, we find the combos still. We don't need the contains anymore because it's checking inside the function. Uh, but the function is different and its requirements are different. It needs to know the space. So, is that a different amount of parentheses? Let's see. Okay, so that gives us, oh, that's the big data. Let's try it on the example first and see. 14 and 29, I think that's wrong. This says 34. And then it has this idea of like, oh, by the way, the rules are different now, or at least they seem different compared to what I thought it was in part one, which is that the nodes themselves count. So it's not like the two original are different from the echoes. It's their part of the thing that keeps going in all directions, including kind of back to the, to the middle. So for the resonant thing, we actually start with point and other in the set, which means it doesn't need the annotation anymore because it's got enough to know. And now if we run it, we do get 34, which is what they asked for in the example. And then let's do it on the big data, just to be sure. Which uh, is a little weird, because I'm still printing that thing that I showed you guys. But you can see it's pretty fast. It's a little under a second. Not anything like what we had yesterday, which was 15 seconds and giving us a little worry of how long it's going to take. This is fine. Even though it's checking a bunch of stuff, it's checking hundreds versus millions. So is that pretty? No, it's pretty bad. But it does the job and there's no issue of performance or eh, readability. I think if you read the function and you see what's going in and coming out, you get the idea. If you look into the function and you see all these strange names, you go, ooh, I don't know about that. But that's the benefit of these type annotations is to say, hey, you give it a point, another space, and it gives you all the points that are resonant. So there you go. I'll try to catch up. I'm a few days behind, but maybe I'll do 9, 10, 11. We'll see how it goes. Thanks.